prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures, offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and milk. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. And these 
Three guys that we tradition tells us who are, do you remember their names? Casper, Matthew, and Balthazar. That's right. The three wise men, the three kings. Of, uh, uh, actually, if you read scriptures very accurately, it's it's the three gifts. The three it doesn't say three kings. We just assign one gift to each one, to each king. So we could have actually six kings here. We should have opened with three six kings of Orient on. <laughs> but they've come because they're seeking something. They're men of education. They're, and Magus was a kind of a, of, a, of, a, of a pagan astrological priest who believed that the great events of the world were, were to be seen in the night sky. And they saw the rising of the star and they said, this star indicates something extraordinary is about to happen. And it must have been really extraordinary for them to leave their homes and to go in search of what was at the end of this star. And scripture tells us that they came in and they just didn't say, hey, hi, what's going on here? <laughs> Who's this kid? They came in, scripture Matthew tells us, and they did not they got down on their knees because they knew that this child that they were encountering for the first time was no ordinary child. The gifts that they brought with them, I suspect, inspired by the Holy Spirit, the gifts that they brought were appropriate for this child, the gold, frankincense, and oil. That brings me to the second word. The revelation of the first word, Christ is now revealed to us as Savior. Not just for the Jewish people, we who are Gentiles give thanks for that this day. Christ is revealed to us as our Lord and Savior. We are, as St. Paul said, grafted on to the great mystery of God's presence, beginning first with his chosen people, but now open up to all nations, including even the Germans and the Poles. <laughs> we Irish were there from the very beginning. <laughs> The second part is gift. We brought there, we saw the gifts that the, that the, um, uh, that the, the Magi brought. But there's also the gift from God himself to us. The gift of his very presence of this newborn child. And with him, the hope. The gift of hope. The gift of faith. The gift of a, of a desire in each and every one of our hearts for a better world. Now the question would be on this, our final full day of our pilgrimage journey, have you identified the gifts that you received along the way of our pilgrimage journey? The gift of a deeper relationship, I hope, with the Lord as we've traveled in this holy place. The gift of a deeper appreciation for the Jewish roots of our Catholic Christian faith as we see and visit. The gift of fellowship hundred and so of us who have traveled in these days, been there for one another. Gifts from God all the time, from the abundant heart of God, flowing freely in us. And what gifts do we bring then to Christ Jesus, our newborn King? The gift of a, maybe a, a stronger resolution to be more faithful to the gospel message. Be more attentive to our marriage vows, to the promises I made as a priest and I continually strive to make as a pastor to my parish community. The promises of you are a single person, divorced, a widow, promises to be that living example for others of the Christian life. Gifts flowing back and forth, gifts from God abundantly given supremely his son Jesus Christ and our gifts in return though meager they may they be God is pleased with our gifts and we strive to live in the truth of this revelation of this day we have a lot to give thanks for a lot to rejoice in. I hope that today on this final full day of our job, our pilgrimage journey you might take a few moments We'll head off later on this afternoon, this morning, to the to the Jordan, where the place of another great theophany, another great revelation. But we're here this morning on this feast of the of the of the Epiphany, the solemnity of the Epiphany. 
to recognize that in this newborn child, we have come to place all of our hopes, our dreams, before whom we place all of our struggles and our trials, and before whom we give thanks for all of our joys and our celebrations. A lot to give thanks for. The Magi saw the star the night, the night sky, and they followed it. You and I don't have to look into the night sky. Perhaps we may need to look into our hearts and find there the very light, presence of God. Because it's been there since the beginning. It's been there since the moment of our baptism. Christ imprinted on our hearts the sign of his baptism. Let's follow that in our pilgrimage journey. Not just for these days here in the Holy Land, but the pilgrimage journey. Amen. Amen.